Okay, so this is a new story, a new piece of uh, flash fiction for Genosco Literary Journal. Um, it's called The Girl in the Video Directed. And <laughs> I'm going to eat some strawberries. This piece uh, was inspired by my wife, who I love more than anything, because she's really pretty and smart, and because most of all she loves me when no one else does because I'm a psychopath, and I just got out of prison, mm -hmm. and I'm extraordinarily violent, and people are afraid of me, and they say really mean things about me, which hurts my feelings. It makes me want to go to bed early at night and not want to have any fun whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Ugh, people. Good God. Heartless. Troglodytes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this uh, this harkens, uh, for me anyway, to, to Greek mythology and the story of Eros and Psyche. And how the Greeks uh, perceived love as being a mental illness. And um, it's all women. It's all the, the women's fault. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> or maybe, I mean, mostly. Um, and that's not true, of course. Men are vile. Vile, evil drones. Bent on war and control. But... At least we don't have iPhones. Well, at least not the real men. Yeah. Uh, so this is the girl in the video. It's about 556 words. And it's fiction. Even if it's nonfiction. At the edge of the bed is where I put my head in my hands. Thumbing my temples, thinned by too much rage and words, love is a jealous god, waiting for any reason to breach faith and abort. I can never speak again, nor do I deserve her, so I can only rewind. Her sleep is a silent, painful shape completely lost under the covers. Our daughter murmurs through dreams in a crib pushed to the wall. In fact, I notice now how everything has a reason to be up against walls interior skin, separation, divides, codes and blood for human nature. I've punctured the heart, killing what was always mine to finish and start. Have you ever believed in a thing so innocent, pure and complete, heavy-handed and manic you defend it until smothered it blues cold? She had the baby in our front room, in a blow-up pool she filled herself, all alone at home, as I phoned collect from a prison built deep in the desert. For two years we crafted fantasies of the future, our desires for penetration. Such longing kept us steady in letters, but her loyalty I cursed extinct. Two visits a week, whether pregnant or with child, I could set my clock by. Identical histories, mother, father, customers, drugs, prostitution, and addiction. The age of onset will never wait for synchronicity to be anything but attractive. I had to have her, and she had to have me filmed, then watched repeatedly. She said, play with yourself. And I did for her, while seeing me in her. My mouth struggles to find the right sounds as she moans and loops effortlessly. And in real life, she's the quiet one while I can't shut the fuck up. But in our videos, I'm guided fearlessly. I am positioned professionally. And so I begin to think that I'm not unique. In fact, I'm not even me anymore. She wants to trust me. And so she asks, can I? Then I lie down to try these things all bad men pay for. Purple light on wet lips blowing smoke pictures. She keeps me holding mirrors and assuming that we have either died or been awake forever. Concerned for her knees, I fetch a pillow which seems utterly absurd when compared to the way I've treated her mind. 
Will you warm it up for me, she pouts. And I've packed the pipe, so I can. I recall the underwear I hid to smell, rubbed against my face. Yes, never wash away these yesterdays. Dealing has never been easy, but math doesn't lie. I do. And blame isn't some shade of paint just anyone can buy at Home Depot or Bed Bath & Beyond. Guilt comes more from the slap than the voices in my head, which used to be song lyrics, the kids, or me jerking free from nods. No, not an agreement or feigned denial, but long, reckless hibernation. Where have you been? She asks. But who wants to hear the truth when we can always pretend that I'm kidding? Moments like this are missing Christmas, trivial, broke, and quiet, because for once, I am sorry. And that's why my microphone is bigger than yours. Okay. And it's white. Oh yeah, by Gino's Peacock. It's a good book. I mean, I, I don't get... I think I get like a couple dollars in royalties. I think maybe once a year I make probably about eight dollars. So that means uh, I at least have three fans. Unless, of course, my wife is buying all three books, which would suck.